educator and a published author of uh, 13 pragmatic business books based on the ACCA UK and the ICA Ghana professional qualification examination. Now, in case you are writing the ICA May 2020 examination or the ACCA March or June examination and you are looking for study material, lecture videos, some assistance or mentorship and, and someone to answer some questions for you towards uh, in your preparation for the examination, then my YouTube channel is just what you need. So click the link below and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now on my YouTube channel, I have lecture videos on various subjects, on various topics to assist you in order for you to prepare for the examination. But the most important thing is that you need to subscribe to the channel because every weekday, that is from Monday to Friday, at 4 p.m., that is 1600 GMT, I go live on my YouTube channel and teach on the business lecturer in Wudin Show. So this is where I teach on various subjects, on various topics, and I answer students' questions. So whatever questions that students have, whatever topic that students want us to want me to teach on, want uh, me to throw light on, during this session, every weekday from Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. or 1600 GMT, I go live on YouTube and teach this subject. My objective is to be able to provide you with lecture videos, with content, with assistance, answer your questions for you so you prepare well for your examination so that you can ultimately pass the exams and take your life to the next level. So click the link below. Remember to subscribe to the channel because every single day I also release lecture videos on various subjects, on various topics, on strategies and techniques, on how to study, how to be productive, how to be uh, somebody who can achieve your goals, how to be able to position yourself in order to win in life and in everything that you are doing. So click the link below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ishira Premium, and make sure you join me every weekday, 4 p.m. on the Business Lecturer in Wudin Show as I lecture to help you and prepare you for the ICA May 2020 examination or the ACCA March or June examination. So hey, thank you very much. Click the link below and make sure you subscribe to the channel and become part of this community. Leave a question on this video. What topic do you want me to cover? What subject do you want to look at? Don't give me subject really, but that, that's going to be a bit broader. So give me topics you want me to look at. Whatever topic, whatever subject it is, just put it in, in the comment box and I'm going to look at it and we will design the business lecture in Wudin Show session based on those questions and I'll be lecturing that live 4 p.m. Monday through to Friday on my YouTube channel. Inshira Premium, subscribe to the channel, become part of this community, and remember, tell your friends, your colleagues, your loved ones, and the people that you know they need some of these content in order for them to prepare for the examination. I am at your service, and my objective, as always, is to provide you with nothing but the best le lecture videos so you can prepare for your examination. So subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that when I go live, you will be the first person to be notified. I'll see you during our lecture video. Hi there, so welcome to a new week and welcome to a new session of the Business Lecturer in Wooden Show with yours truly, Inshira Premium. Very much excited with uh, the week. Uh, we're going into February, or we are already in February, and so it's getting really excited as we go ahead with the journey towards the ICA May 2020 examination. Now, if you are joining the broadcast and you are live here, comment below with your questions, what you want us to look at, what you want us to cover. Comment below with any uh, topics that you are looking at uh, or you want me to look at, you want me to discuss. Remember to subscribe to the channel as well because every single day I release lecture videos as well as come live like this 4 p.m. and uh, teach on the business lecture in Wudin Show where I design the course based on the students or questions that students have asked uh, throughout the week or in the course of our discussion. So if there's anything that, that is on your mind or there are things, topics that you want me to cover, you want me to teach live or you want me to throw some light on, put it in the comment box. 
if you are watching the replay or you can put it in the chat box if you are watching me live and remember to share the video as well with your colleagues you know on this channel it is the go-to channel where we have a lot of content here on various subjects on various topics issues like introduction to management accounting management accounting financial management financial reporting corporate reporting taxation public sector audit and assurance uh, advanced audit and assurance just name it we have content here on the channel so make sure you share the channel with your colleagues let's be able to reach as much people as possible because there are a lot of people as well outside of our scope here that will be interested to identify my channel and also use the channel to become something that will help them in order for them to pass the examination Greetings also to uh, foreign uh, students across uh, the continent of Africa, part of Asia, who also join us and uh, during these discussions and uh, also for them to be part of the family. So thank you very much once again for joining us on the Business Lecturer in Wooding Show. And today we are looking at the Cost and Profit Statement Part 3. Uh, hopefully that is going to be the final session and then from next, tomorrow, we're going to be touching on other issues in corporate reporting, uh, sorry, in, in financial reporting, uh, uh, yeah, by extension, corporate reporting, and then some issues about public sector as well. So, it's a no week, it's a no month. We are going to be doing this from now till you write your exams every weekday, 4 p.m., Monday to Friday. I'm going to be jumping onto the camera and come here and come and lecture you on various subjects, on various topics. The way I designed this lecture, it's based on questions that we have heard from students and the queries that we've heard from students so that I will come on live like this and provide you with the assistance and provide you with the learning and with the environment so you can be able to prepare for the examination. So let's look at what we are uh, doing today. Like I mentioned, we are looking at the cost and profit statement and that is going to be part three. If you have any questions, put it in the chat box, put it in the comment box. I'm going to be answering all your questions for you. Now, in the, in the, in the first and second parts, so this is the part three, we discuss various issues that you have to understand in relation to the preparation of the profit statement. We look at, especially in the part two, we spend some time to look at how the cost and the profit statement can be prepared using these three methods, that is the absorption costing, marginal costing, and then certainly activity based, based costing. So I introduced, I, I didn't introduce you, I actually went into detail with this. So we discussed the various issues and I gave you the pro forma. Now, in case you are watching the part three and you've not watched the part two and the part one, make sure you look at it on the channel. You will get it. You get access to that those lecture videos and watch them so that what we're going to be coming to do today will be meaningful to you because primarily we're going to be solving some questions in relation to uh, the management accounting about absorption costing, marginal costing, and then hopefully activity-based costing. Now remember, like I said when we started with this discussion, this is a fundamental area of the syllabus, okay? It's a fundamental area of the syllabus, meaning that for every management accounting exam that you're going to be writing, there is definitely going to be a question on the cost sheet or the profit statement using any of these guys. So it's, it's, a, it's a done deal, it's a go-to that you must understand everything in relation to that. So let's get into our questions briefly. And then let's see what we need to do. So I'm going to be reading out the questions, the question and then we're going to put our preambles down like I do all the time. You're not going to do that in the exam hall because you have a question paper, so you're going to be underlining the key things. The reason why I put the preambles on the board is because 
I don't have the questions, but what, if you have the questions and you are in the exam hall, you're not going to be rewriting the preambles out. You're just going to be underlining them because that is going to tell you what you need to use in solving the question. So we're going to be going through this question, which is actually about uh, the income statement or the profit statement using the absorption costing and then uh, and then the marginal costing. So we're going to be using this first question as a guinea pig question to go through that and see how we can actually prepare the profit statement. Remember, one key statement I made when we were looking at the pro forma in the part two that was last week Friday was that. Uh, under the absorption costing, we are going to be preparing the profit statement the same way as you know from the financial reporting class or from the financial accounting class. So we're going to be bringing our sales figure. From there, we bring we less cost of sales. Now, under the cost of sales, we bring the opening stock, we bring the direct material, direct labor, direct overhead, direct expenses. Then we get the prime cost. Then we add factory overheads. Remember, if we are doing the absorption costing with the factory overheads, we bring both the fixed and variable. Then we get the total production cost, and then we less the closing stock, and then we subtract the figure we get from the sales figure, and that gives you the gross profit. Now, remember one critical thing that I mentioned also that if you are using the marginal absorption costing, if you are using the absorption costing, immediately you get to the gross profit, you need to identify and find out whether overheads have been over-absorbed or under-absorbed. Very critical, very fundamental. And last week, I made mention of it, I explained it thoroughly. I mentioned that the way you'll be able to distinguish whether there is an over-absorption of overhead or under-absorption of overhead is the comparison of the uh, budgeted units against the actual units. So if the budgeted unit is smaller than the actual unit, that means overhead has been over-absorbed. If the budgeted unit is less than the actual unit, that means overhead has been under-absorbed. And we said when overheads are over-absorbed, what happens is that we need to add the difference back to the gross profit or less it from expenses. But if overheads are under-absorbed, then we subtract it from the gross profit or add it to the expenses. So that was the principles we established under the absorption costing. Then we said after you do the over or under absorption of overheads, then you now less all non-production overheads, like selling and distribution overheads, finance overheads, administration overheads. So all other overheads expenses that a company incurs, what you do is that you less all of them, and definitely you come to your net profit or loss. So that was what we mentioned, and that is how we go with a pro forma for the absorption costing, using it to prepare the income statement or the profit statement. Then the next thing we need to also understand is the absorption costing. But we mentioned that under the absorption costing, we are going to be categorizing the cost into eight fixed and variable components. For that reason, in the uh, uh, marginal costing, we are interested in looking at contribution first. So we said that our contribution is equal to the sales minus what? The variable cost. Remember, we said the variable cost includes both the, the factory variable cost and then the non-production variable cost. So you saw that we bring we brought a sales figure, then we less the marginal cost. The marginal cost we bring opening stock, direct material, direct labor, direct overhead. Why am I saying direct overhead? Direct expenses. Then you add it and that gives you the prime cost. After you get a prime cost, this time around you will add only variable factory overheads. Be careful because under absorption cost costing, you'll be adding both fixed and variable factory overheads. But under marginal costing, you will bring only what? The variable factory overheads and that gives you the factory cost or the production cost. You less your closing stock and that gives you the marginal cost and then you less that from your sales then that gives you the factory margin. After you get a factory margin, you then less all variable non-production overheads from the factory margin, then you now get your contribution. We mentioned that in case of where the entity does not have any variable non-production overheads, 
then the factory margin will be the same as what well, the contribution figure so after we get our contribution what do we do we list all the first calls and then boom we are done with that in relation to that so that is how we go by the issue in relation to the marginal costing and the absorption costing then we said that with the absorption costing, one key assumption that we use is that overheads are absorbed using labor hours. That is an assumption. So overheads are absorbed using labor hours. And for that reason, it doesn't provide us with the accurate way of absorbing the overheads between cost centers and cost units. For that reason, a better approach to properly absorb the overheads is using what we call the activity-based costing, where we are absorbing the overheads, looking at the cost pool and then what, the cost drivers. So I gave you a couple of examples about the cost pool and then the cost drivers. One of the things we mentioned was that under the activity-based costing, a couple of steps will be followed in relation to looking at the activity-based costing. The first thing is that we identify the major activities that give rise to the overheads. So what, is, what are the major activities that give rise to overheads? We identify that first, and that could be machining, it could be dispatching of orders, it could be production setup, okay? It, it, it could be purchasing. All of these things are the, active, the major activities that give rise to overheads. Then after we identify the major activities that give drive to the overheads, the second thing is we determine what causes the cost of each activity. And these are what the cost drivers. For instance, if you are looking at the machining, then a cost driver for machining is going to be the machine hours. If you are looking at the dispatching of orders, then the, the cost driver is going to be the number of dispatch orders that you made during the year. If you are looking at the setup as a cost uh, pool or as a major activity, then a cost driver is going to be what? The number of setups. So, number one, you identify the major activities. Number two, you determine what causes each of those activities. So, the major activities are pool in a pool, and then the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the things that causes the cost are referred to as the cost drivers. Then the third, we say we calculate the total cost of for each activity, which is the cost pool. I mentioned that. Then we calculate an absorption rate for each of the cost drivers. We calculate an absorption rate for each of the cost drivers, and then we calculate the total overhead for each product manufactured, and then we can then calculate the overheads per unit for each of the products produced. So this is what we go through in relation to what we look at if you are looking at it activity-based costing and we will be going through all of these as well right so now that we've done our quick recap to see where we were and what we were discussing let's get into some other issues and let's start with some questions So let me rub this place because I'm going to be putting my prayer balls here, alright? So I can work here and here. So my prayer balls are going to be here. So let's go. Jiwa Limited. So the, uh, the name of our question is Jiwa. Jiwa Limited. So let's go for it. Jiwa Limited manufactures bottled fruit juice Hadisa or Hibiza. Jiwab Limited manufactured bottle for juice Hibiza. During the first year of operation for the first car year ended 31st December 2018, the company produced 20,000 bottles of Hibiza. Okay, so production unit. Alright, so I start with my preambles. So production unit, 20,000 bottles. All right, 20,000 bottles. Next one. But was able to sell only 17,000 bottles for 30 Ghana cities per bottle. So, sales unit is 17,000 bottles. 
And then the selling price per unit is 30 Ghana cities. 30 Ghana cities. The cost of raw material per bottle for the manufacturing of Hibisa is 5 Ghana cities. Okay, so material cost per bottle is 5 Ghana cities. And it costs the company five Ghana cities per bottle on direct wages to produce the product. Okay, so direct wages per bottle, it's also five Ghana cities. There we go. Also, Jiwab incurred a variable manufacturing overhead cost per bottle of two Ghana cities. So, Variable manufacturing overheads per bottle, okay, is two Ghana cities. And variable selling expenses of three Ghana cities per bottle. Variable selling expenses per bottle is three Ghana cities. The total annual fixed cost incurred during operations were. 160,000 on manufacturing overheads and 80,000 on selling and administrative expenses. Okay, so first costs. We're gonna have manufacturing and that is 160,000 Ghana cities. But you know that's fixed cost, right? So that's not based on the number of bottles we want to produce. Then the next one is selling and administration S and D overheads, and that is also a fixed component of eighty thousand Ghana cities. Okay, so this is the information we have from the question. Jiwa Limited manufactures manufactures bottle produce Hibisa during the first year of operation for the for the fiscal year ended thirty first December twenty eighteen. The company produced 20,000 bottles of Ibiza, but was able to sell only 17,000 bottles for 30 Ghana cities per bottle. The cost of raw material per bottle for manufacturing of Ibiza is 5 Ghana cities, and it costs the company 5 Ghana cities per bottle on direct wages to produce their products. Also, Jiwa can a variable manufacturing wire cost per bottle of two Ghana cities, so variable manufacturing of two Ghana cities, and variable selling expenses of three Ghana cities. Variable selling expenses of three Ghana cities. The total annual fixed cost incurred during operations were 160,000 on manufacturing of IX. So when it comes to the fixed cost, we have 160,000 on the manufacturing of IX. And 80,000 Ghana cities on selling and distribution expenses. Required. Prepare an income statement for GWA if it uses I, full or absorption costing system, and then II, variable or marginal costing system. So, this is the question we have before us, and we are preparing the income statement. Using first the absorption costing and then the second the marginal costing. So, like I mentioned, the name of the question is Jiwa. So, let me rub that and take it a, a, a bit upper so I can have some space there. So, Jiwa limited. Now, we are first going to be preparing the income statement using the absorption costing. So that's the I. So income statement. Then we are using the absorption costing. Right. So this is a single period of, of uh, income statement we're going to be preparing. For that reason, by Miss Smith, Appa, I hope I didn't miss much. You're not really, you've not missed that much. They are yet to solve this question that I'm going through. 
So you are welcome. If you have any questions, you put it in the chat box and I'll be grateful to answer it. So we are looking at a question. If you just jump up, we, just, we, are, just, we are looking at a question and uh, absorption costing, marginal costing, activity based costing. That is the first question we're looking at. And the preambles are what I've detailed out here, which we'll be using in solving the question. So since this is a single uh, one period product, we don't have our uh, two cash columns like this. All right? So two cash columns like this to deal with it. So what comes first? Remember, in absorption costing, we are first interested in what? Gross profit. Then after gross profit, we less all non-production overheads. So I'm going to be doing the absorption costing here. Then we will do the marginal costing here. Then you'll be able to what? spot the difference. Because it's very important for you to identify the differences that we have in the two methods, using them to prepare the income statement. So we go, sales. Now, from the question we were told that the company produced 20,000 bottles of Ibiza but was able to sell only 17,000 bottles. It means the sales is going to be 17,000 okay, bottles times the selling price per bottle was given as 30 Ghana cents. So 17 by 30, we're going to have the answer now. Then we say less cost of sales. The lesson of cost of sales, the first thing we bring is our opening stock, right? But in this question, because it's the first year of operation, we don't have opening stock, so it's not going to be coming here. But what we have is material cost. So the right material cost. And we are told that the direct material cost is 5 Ghana cities per bottle. So how many units did the company produce? 20,000. So that's going to be 20,000 times 5 Ghana cities. And I think that should give us 100,000. Then we come to the direct wages. And that is also going to be 20,000 times, that is also 5, so 100,000, right? So we brought a direct material, direct wages. In this question, there was no direct expenses, right? So we added two up, and that's 200,000 Ghana cities, and that is going to be our prime cost. So after we get a prime cost, because we are using absorption costing, we will add both fixed and variable factory overheads. So you add factory overheads. Now, in the question, we were told about how the overheads are. We were told that variable manufacturing overheads is two Ghana cities per bottle. So, variable. Times the bottle we produce 20,000 and that's going to be 40,000. Then for the fixed overheads, we are told that for manufacturing overheads, it's 160,000. So fixed and that's 160,000. So we add it up and that gives us the factory uh, cost or the production cost. So production or factory cost. So when we add this up, this will be 360, 400,000. Okay, so that is our production cost. Now remember, after we get a production cost, the next thing we do is to less closing stock. So we less closing stock. Now, like, as always, we need to do workings for the closing stock. So I'm going to be doing that above here, okay? So valuation of closing stock. <clears throat> now, we said the formula for the closing stock is unsold units over units produced times 
production or factory cost. Unsold units divided by the unit produced times production or factory cost. So if you check from the question, the company produced 20,000 bottles, but it sold 17,000 bottles. So when we deduct it, unsold unit is going to be what? 3,000 bottles. So it's going to be 3,000 divided by the unit produced 20,000 times the factory or production cost, which we have here as 400,000. So let's punch that out and let's see what we have. I didn't bring a lot of my Casio calculator here, so I need to use this. So 3,000 by 20,000. And that will multiply 400,000. That's going to be 60,000 Ghana cities. You can confirm that as well, okay? 60,000. So when we learn the closing stock from the uh, production cost, then we are going to now get the cost of sales. And that's going to be 340,000. Okay? That's cost of sales. Cost of sales. Then we subtract the cost of sales from the sales figure. Now we also don't have our sales figure yet, so let me do the multiplication. Seventeen. Seventeen by thirty. Seventeen thousand times thirty. That's five hundred and ten thousand. Okay, so five hundred and ten thousand. So five hundred and ten minus three forty thousand. Minus three forty thousand. Uh, 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 three forty one two three. That's one hundred and seventy thousand. And that's our gross profit. That's our gross profit. Okay. So we finish the first stage of the absorption costing. Now remember, I told you that when you get here, you must work for what? Over or under absorption of OIS. In other words, you must compare the budgeted unit against what? The actual unit. In this particular question, we were not given budgeted information because this is the first year the company started operation. So in this question, there, there was nothing like opening stock. Again, in this question, we wouldn't do any over or under absorption of overhead because we don't have any budgeted what, information, okay? So, once we have this, we will now less non-production overhead. Now, what are the non-production overhead given in the question? We were told of variable selling expenses at three gallon cities per bottle. So variable, it's going to be three times the units we sold, 17,000. So three by 17, that's 51,000. Then we bring the fixed. And the fixed was given to us. That is the selling the lot administration and so fix selling and admin and that is given as 80,000 so we add the two up and that is going to be 131 so we subtract that from the gross profit and it is positive so we're going to be getting next profit so that is going to be Let's see. So 131, 170 minus 131. That's 39,000. 
All right, 39,000. So this is our profit using what? The absorption costing. Very simple, sweet, straight to the point. Remember, two things were not in this question. There were no opening stock or there was no opening stock. And because we were not giving budgeted information as well, we do not have uh, anything like over or under absorb overheads. Yes. Now let's go, go on with the second one, and that is marginal costing. So still income statements, but this time around we're using marginal costing. Still we're going to go with the two cash columns. Now, in the marginal costing, it's going to be quite rapid because we have the figures calculated from the eye, so we just pick the figures up and bring them. But this time around, because we are dealing with marginal costing, we're going to be separating the cost between their fixed components and their variable components. And the first thing we are interested in is what? The contribution. And contribution is your selling price minus variable cost and remember the variable cost contains two components that is the uh, production variable cost and then the non-production variable cost so it's very important for us to be able to draw that distinction before we get started with a solution so sales now the sales as in a or as in i we're just bringing it up five hundred and ten thousand. Then, I, I wanted to start spotting the difference of her. That, that what we bring here is not less cost of sales like we did here, but we say less marginal or variable cost. Less marginal or variable cost. Okay, so that is the first difference you have to see. In absorption costing, we say less cost of sales, but in marginal costing, we say what? You less variable cost. Then we bring direct material cost. Now we've already done this here, so we just bring it up 100,000. So I just indicate that it is coming from I. Then direct wages. That's also coming from I. It's not going to change. And that's also 100,000. So we added to up 200,000. And that's our frame cost. Now, this is where I want you to pay very close attention. When we are doing marginal costing, after the prime cost, we add variable factory overheads. Only the variable factory overheads. So we add variable factory overheads. Variable factory overheads. And this is also coming from our I. The variable factory of I is 40,000. So you don't bring the fixed factory of I because the fixed cost will be what? Written off later on. So once we add that, we get 240,000. And that becomes our production or factory cost. Okay? That becomes our production or the factory cost. Then, after we bring that, we now say less closing stock. And we're going to do workings for the closing stock. Like we did in the uh, absorption costing, it's the same thing. It's going to be 3,000 over 20,000, but this time around times what? 240,000. I'll be exporting the difference because in absorption, in the, in the marginal costing, you are only dealing with the variable factory what? cost. The variable factory cost. So it's still going to be 3,000 over 20,000, but this time around times what? 240,000. So let me punch that out. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's go. So 3,000 divided by 20,000. And that's going to multiply to 40,000. That's 36,000. Okay? So at the absorption costing, our closing stock was what? 60,000. But in the marginal costing, our closing stock is just 36,000. Why? Because in absorption costing, you are valuing closing stock at full factory cost. At full factory cost. That means we included both fixed and variable factory cost. But in marginal costing, you are valuing the closing stock at variable factory cost. This is the Millionaire Booklet. How to get super rich. My name is Grant Cardone. I'm the author. I wrote this book. Hold on. Right, so 36,000, 240 minus 36,000, and that's 204. And that will give us our marginal cost. So we left the 204 from the sales figure, which is 510,000. So 510 minus 204, that's 306. And that is going to be our factory margin. Okay? Now, why is that called factory margin and not contribution? Because so far we've dealt with only what? Factory issues. Okay? We've dealt with only factory issues. So now we're going to be bringing. So, since we've dealt with only factory cost issues, we are going to be only dealing with factory margin. Then now we will less the variable non-production overheads. Okay? The variable non-production overheads. And in this question, the variable non-production overheads here is what? The selling expenses. And we did that here as 51,000. So selling expenses. 51,000, we bring that up straight up. When we now less the variable non production overheads, we will now get our contribution. So 306 minus 51, that's 255. So that becomes our what? contribution. So I want you to start spotting the differences, okay? Very, very important. Then now we less first cost. Okay? We less all first cost. And the first cost are in two folds. We have the factory cost, which is here, or manufacturing. So the manufacturing first cost, which is 160,000. And then the selling and administration. And that is 80,000. So when we add that up, it's going to give us 240,000. So we will let that up. And what are we getting? 15,000, I guess, as the net profit and the marginal cost. As the net profit for the marginal cost. So that is the Thing you must understand about uh, 
the marginal constant. So look at how it goes. So look at the difference. Now, the question we then ask ourselves is, why is the marginal costing profit different from the absorption costing profit? One of the key reasons is the valuation of what? The closing stock. Is the valuation of the closing stock. So if you check it out, we will do a reconciliation, and that's going to be 60 minus 36, and that is 24,000. When that 24,000 is added to this 15,000, it gives us back the 39,000. So in case we are preparing a reconciliation statement, all we will do is we bring the marginal costing profit, which is 15,000. If there is any over or under absorption of overheads in the question, which in this question there is none, so I'm not going to bring anything there, then the excess value of our closing stock. And that is 60,000 minus 36,000, and that's 24,000. So when you add it up, that gives you the absorption costing profit. Of 39,000. 39, so, this is how we prepare the income statement using the absorption costing and also what? The marginal costing. Very, very important. Now, remember, like I said, this is a fundamental area, an area that whether you like it or not, there is a question in the exam or waiting for you on these guys. Absorption costing, marginal costing, activity base. It's a, there is a question always waiting for us there in the exam hall to look at it. So this is the what you need to understand about how we do the treatment in relation to that. So if there are any questions that you have, you put it in the comment box or you put it in the chat box, uh, comment box if you are watching the uh, replay of this video. And it's uh, a question we are solving on Jiwa called Jiwa and it is based on the absorption costing and the marginal costing. So I'll be ending here today on the business lecture in Woodin Show and it's been a, a fruitful three day session on absorption costing uh, cost and profit statement all right so in case you missed the part one that is the first day that was on thursday the part two was on friday and then the part three is today which is monday so in case you miss those sessions go back get they are all available on the channel look at them and watch them and build your understanding very well make sure you solve some questions also on your own and if there are any other things you want us to look at we also have this uh, the full course available online so for those of you who your schedules your time cannot allow you to attend lectures or you are located at a place where you cannot attend lectures you can still take the course online and study under my mentorship from everywhere at any time with that you get access to the full lecture videos on all the subjects you get access to ebooks you get access to question kits and most importantly you get access to it with a one-on-one -on -one session with me or one of our dedicated lecturers once a week via skype to answer any questions that you are having for what you are studying in the course of the week remember you need to do something every single day in order for you to be in a better position to pass the examination. So make sure that you attend lectures. If you cannot attend lectures, then you can take the course online and study under my mentorship. But make sure that you do something, have a personal timetable and work at that place in order for you to prepare for the ICA May 2020 examination. So this is the business lecture in Within Show. We spent three days looking at the cost and profit statement in management accounting. And we will meet same time tomorrow as we continue with something else in financial reporting or corporate reporting or public sector based on the uh, questions that we have. So if you also have questions on something you want us to cover, comment below and uh, we will look at it and prepare it in our discussion. For any query inquiries, you can call or WhatsApp us on 050-114-9296, 050 
1149290. So thank you for joining the broadcast today. I'll see you same time tomorrow, 4 p.m. Remember to subscribe to this channel and share the video with your friends, your colleagues on Facebook, on WhatsApp, everywhere that you can share it. And tell your friends about it that every single day, 4 p.m. Ishara Premium goes live from Monday to Friday on its YouTube channel and we can all be part of this uh, and create a community and create a hub where people can come and get questions answered for them to prepare well for the examination. So thank you for joining the broadcast today. It's been a fruitful experience today and we concluded on the cost and profit statement. So tomorrow we will continue with our show and we will look at other things in financial reporting, public sector or based on the questions that we have here. So see you tomorrow and make sure you take care of yourself and spend some time to go over the things that we have discussed in relation to this. Kwame Smith, please how do we get in contact with you? You can call our WhatsApp 050 9296 050 So I just put it in the comment box or in the chat box 050 So you can call or what's up that line and uh, whatever question you have you'll be able to answer it for those of you who are looking for taxation book or uh, either advanced taxation or principle of tax my tax books are also available 120 uh, Ghana cities and you can call the same number or what's up the same number wherever you are delivery can be arranged and you'll be able to get access to the book so thank you for joining the broadcast today 050 1149296 and I'll see you again tomorrow as we continue with our journey towards the ICA May 2020 examination. All right, Kwame, you are welcome and I'll see you tomorrow. This is the Millionaire Booklet How to Get Super Rich. My name is Grant Cardone.